So in the previous session, we are able to achieve our animation that will definitely bring us into the last scene or into the last screen. So right now, let's go ahead and transform and translate this together with the, for, uh, with the uh, form inputs. So the way we can achieve this is to definitely uh, create a gesture handler, just like we did at the top here. So I'm going to uh, turn this new state. So I'm just going to say new state. New state is going to be same thing that we did at the top. And it's going to make use of the state dot on tamarind as well in the state in the value, the animated uh, value. Now let's create a new gesture. So let me just give this one a new gesture. So the new gesture takes in the on gesture events, which will definitely read the state of the new state dot the current value of that state. So let's define our, our animation before we move on. So I'm going to define a double bounce and name, but uh, let me not use this directly. Let me just define a general and name because we are going to be making use of one animation for everything here. So we are starting with uh, a value of zero. And uh, right, right, right now we can now define our animation. Sorry for that huge noise, guys. So we can define an our animation, but for now, before we define our animation, let's uh, make sure that this is gonna run properly. So we're gonna use that, but we wanna make sure that it's gonna only happen when the state new state of current changes. So we want to check for the condition, and it's gonna check for the equals value of the new state dot current. If it happens to be a state dot end value. Because right here we started with state.onDetermined, so I have to change this to state.onDetermined. If that is true, we just have to as well check for our name value. So our name value, I'm sorry for all these typos, but just kind of grab my explanation. We have to check for the current value of the name value itself. We have to check whether the value is zero. So if that happens to be zero, we have to set that an M value. An M dot current to one. So I have to complete this with the E vector. So just like we did at the top, that's the same thing that we are doing right here. So for us to make use of that is to uh, import our tab gesture handler because we're going to wrap everything inside this form section to the tab gesture handler. So I have to come down. So after the logo, we have this. So I'm going to wrap this. I have to wrap this with the tab gesture handler. So I have to go to the bottom part of it. So guys, sorry for this. Absolutely. Cover it up once. Okay. So once that's wrapped, I think definitely we do not have an error, but uh, it's something like a local bounce. Okay. That was when I was trying to uh, do this to see how it's going to work. But uh, let's go ahead and create that animation called local bounce. So the way we can create that local bounce animation is to make use of this anime itself. So I have to create, uh, let me say, uh, let me say new animation. Let's change this to English. The new animation is going to be making use of the with spring transition. So I'm not gonna stress myself with that. I can just come to logo.js and grab one of those code that gets. Okay, we, we did it here. In the odd VTN. And just grab one of these codes and just come over here and paste that. So let's go ahead and create the logo bounce animation. So cons logo bounce. So the logo bounce is going to be making use of the interpolate feature with the new animation and it's going to accept through an input range of 0 to 1. So we want the value to go from 
from zero actually to the logo overlay height because we want it to come down so we can just save that come find out I, I space something badly so this tab gesture handler not tab g so i can save that so we do not have any error again so for us to make use of what i use it right now whenever we come over here uh, this kind of looks bad uh, so let me kind of refresh the application itself we can now come over here I'll come over to the tab gesture handler and we have to bring in the new handler itself so over right here you can bring in the new, i think i named it okay new gesture so guys sorry for this machine being slow i don't really know what happened my machine is kind of on on in, on the big memory so i have to refresh that so let's click on this but i don't know why it's happening so why this is happening is because we copy the hide and seek and you know that we grab this code from this code from the odd btn so eventually in the odd btn we are making use of the hide and seek effect uh, animation so that's why we are having that uh, animation taking place automatically which is very bad so we just have to come here and make use of the anim itself those coins so let's save that again so you can see our logo is at the top so when we click on this it should definitely uh, go to the bottom so it should be new state occurrence so why it's not running is because i figured out that i didn't set this properly so we have to clear this let's do that once more so we can check for the equals value of the anim.current and it's going to be zero then if if that works then we have to set the anime that's going back to one so guys forgive me for that uh, mistake so let's save that again and now let's click on this so you can see that the logo went down so we want this to go up and eventually uh we can see the logo at the bottom so we can now create form of const form up which is going to use the interpolate value as well it's going to be using the new animation and it's going to be taking an input train of 0 to 1 just like the one at the top and the output range you want it to go up which means it's going to start with the logo overlay height so if you watch this video from the beginning part of it, you will understand how we set all this logo overlay height and we want it to definitely go to zero. So we have to add that to the form part of this. So the form part of this is exactly where the start gesture handler is. Then we can come over here, we can now set this to form up. So let's see that. So you can see it's it's kind of wanting to do it by itself because we've not refreshed our application. So let me refresh so that you can really see what I've done. So when we click on this, and lastly when we click on this, you can see this goes up why this comes down. So this is kind of uh, mixed together. We need to add some things to it. So. I can come over here to this logo bounds. I can add something like 50 to it so that it can uh, as well bring it down uh, more. It's not actually working there. Uh, uh, maybe I can just add it here. So guys, sorry for this noise. I don't know why this car is so noisy. So Let's refresh our application to see the effect. So let's click on this. So right now you can see this uh, exactly what we have achieved in this video. So that's how we can definitely use the React Native Redash as well as React Native Reanimated and also React Native Gesture Handler to achieve something that is going to 
be a cool effect on our Android application. So if you really enjoyed this video, I really want you to hit the like button and also the subscribe button. So thank you and see you next time.